so the drama begins. We started this morning at the gates of Jerusalem, outside of the holy area. Expect, expecting something incredible to happen. The Lord had come. He was about to return to the holy city, the city of David, the city of God's presence, the city of God's people united. And he was mounted upon a colt and triumphantly began to enter the city. As, it, as he did, the celebratory people began to scatter their cloaks upon the ground, putting palm branches before him as a symbol of honor, of elevation, of recognition of who he really was. And he entered that city knowing full well where he was going and what the end was to be. We do this in the church with great pageantry. We celebrate Holy Week with incredible pageantry. We do it in a very ceremonial, incredibly pious, very powerful and dramatic way. And those of us who call ourselves Christians watch this spectacle as it begins to unfold. This holy drama, this beautiful play. Indeed, in several places throughout the world, people gather to see the, the blessed passion play. They gather it over Amagao in Germany. They gather in Eureka Springs in Arkansas. And there is great pageantry, an incredible show. <clears throat> and we can take it all in. We can see it as some Hollywood extravaganza. And if we do that, we miss the whole point. It's not about the pageantry. It's not about the ceremonial. It's not about the holy words and pompous acts of our clergy. It's about the passion of our Lord. If we lose that in the midst of the drama, in the midst of the show, how can we possibly know what Easter is really all about? Or is it just another part of the play, the glorious happy ending, where Jesus rides off into the sunset and ascends into heaven? And we walk out of the church unchanged. Holy Week is not about the pageantry. It's not about the staging. It's not about the play. It's not something to be watched. It's something to be felt. We've just staged the story of the death of Christ. We do it in a dramatic fashion. We have people who stand in place of Christ, in place of Pilate. We hear the narration. We get a sense of the story. But the real essence of this story is not what we've seen. It's not even what we've said. It's in what we feel. Great drama is not meant just to tell a story or to show how great the actors are. It's meant to touch our lives. This story, <clears throat> this drama, is meant to change our lives. We've just spent 40 long days where we should have been examining 
what we are in relation to God. How we stand up to what it is that God calls us to be. How well we carry this holiness of Christ. And if you're like I am, and you've examined your part in this drama, we discover we've come up short. We haven't upheld what it is that Christ calls us to be, and yet we have the pomposity to stand in the presence of Christ and look at the authorities and scream at the top of our lungs, Crucify Him! That's not some aimless crowd 2,000 years ago. That's you and I today. We stand there and scream, give us Barabbas. Not give us the Son of God. Give us Barabbas, which means the Son of the Father, with a small f. Holy Week is a passion story to be felt, not watched. For me, the essence of Holy Week is the last three days. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. It's part of the story. It's part of the feeling. Monday, Thursday is a lot like today. We enter the church in glorious majesty. Not wearing red the color of blood, but celebrating in white the color of festival. It's the Last Supper. It's the great central act of the Christian church. We receive the reality of the body and blood of Christ in our lives. We celebrate. It's a glorious moment. At the end of that glorious moment, Jesus leaves. He's told his disciple, do what you must do, and he retreats. He gets out of the holy place. He goes off to a place where he can try to be alone, and he takes some of his trusted disciples with him to kind of stay at the gate to keep watch, to keep vigil, as he goes off away from it all to the garden at Gethsemane. And he stands at that garden and he goes through the trauma of his life. Father, take this cup from my mouth. Daddy, don't make me do this. He's in agony. And his disciples, like me, like you, fall asleep. They aren't there to support him. They just fall asleep. They don't watch the drama. They don't feel the drama. In the church, after the Monday, Thursday service, we take the Blessed Sacrament away from the church, out into another place, a place where it doesn't always be, a place where it doesn't seem quite right. We take it to the Garden of Gethsemane. This year we take it out of the church as far as we can get from it and still stay in the building. And we put it in the library in a sense of reverence and holiness, and we keep watch, or we fall asleep. We fall asleep because we don't care. Do we not keep watch because we don't care? Or is it just part of the story? Is it just another symbolic act? Those of us who've carried the Blessed Sacrament out of the church, the body and blood of Christ, into the garden, we return to this magnificent building, arrayed in festal splendor, 
Is that just part of the play? Or can we sit in this building and not feel that emptiness? We leave that service in silence. Total silence. Is it part of the play? We should be leaving it in silence. We've just done a dreadful thing. We've sent Christ away. We pushed him out of our lives. We're getting ready to kill him. The next day we return to this building. It's out dark. The only light is somewhere around the altar. Jesus is not here. It wasn't part of some play. We have pushed him out. You and me. Not 2,000 years ago. Today. And we do that in our lives. Do we do it out of a sense of guilt? Is that what I'm talking about? No. We do it because we're human. We do it because somehow it's not important to us. It's become ceremony. We go through the solemn liturgy of Good Friday. What in times of old we called the Mass of the Pre-Sanctified giving it some sort of holy name. But the reality is, we take what remains of Christ, what we had taken to the altar of repose in the Garden of Gethsemane far away, we brought it back into the building, and now we're going to take it out of our life completely, for all of that holy sacrament is going to disappear. At the end of the service on Good Friday, Everything is empty. Jesus truly is not here. We leave in silence. I hope when we leave in silence, we feel that emptiness. The next day, Saturday night, after sundown, sundown in the church means the beginning of the next day, we relive part of that passion. We come into the church and it's dark. We hear the salvation history with stories from the Old Testament. Stories of God's gift of life. The story of creation. We hear again the story of our wretchedness. And that God felt it was so wretched that the world had to be destroyed by a great flood. We feel that sense of the dry bones of what it means to be without God. Our world has lost that. Maybe we have to. And we go through our baptismal vows, those five promises that were made for us and that we reaffirm in our confirmation. And most of us can't even tell each other what those vows are. Is it merely ceremony? Or is it something that we've taken upon ourselves? And suddenly at the end of that story of our salvation history, the inside of the church begins to be filled with light. The house lights come up. And that memory that we have of that empty altar and that barrenness is replaced by the sense of Easter. The flowers. Smells, the lights, the candles, the glory of God. <clears throat> Do we feel it? Or is it just part of the play? Holy Week 
is the fullness of God's gift to you and to me. The ceremony, although at times powerful, is dwarfed and should be dwarfed by what we feel, the gift of Christ, the gift of everlasting life, the promise of sins forgiven. It's not about the candles. It's not about the clothing. It's about what we feel in our heart. It's about the presence of Jesus Christ in your life and the gift that it brings. God help us to not get caught up in the pageantry, to not see the processions, the candles, the brightness as a play, but to realize it truly is a passion that burns within us. God's gift, Christ's love, that's what it's about. <clears throat> Be part of it. Allow it to fill your life. And on Easter Day, walk out of this building not having seen a wonderful play and participated in a great tragedy, but find your life changed. Because that's what Christ is about. Not the show, but the heart. Amen. Amen.